we decided to get out of the um, studio and ask Attila to take us to a haunted location. So here we are. Um, this is an abandoned building. See what we get on the night. Also joining us, the crew from Whisper, they're a paranormal investigation team, um, and Attila will be with us as well. Okay, coming into this room, I do feel like a shortness of breath, headaches, and things like that, but it feels residual. It feels like it's residually in the energy. It's not that More like an imprint, so you're not contacting spirit. You no. feel the energy from the place that that's accumulated here. Yeah, that's correct. That it was used. At some point in time, and, I, and as I say that, I get like around the 1930s, that there may have been um, some mental um, patients here. I think that's where the energy of the head was where I was going, because I've got the word def gallery. Def deformity, mm -hmm. and I do feel like that there was maybe some um, patients with mental illness. I keep getting run through my head and again I don't feel like I'm connecting in with a spirit per se but I keep getting the same grumpy old man. The grumpy old man, that's actually one of the phrases that um, the, the caretaker who handed us the key used just before we came in here. I'm connecting in with some of the mental health mm. when that was used for that time and I'm actually being shown um, people tied to beds. I get a sense of um, clanging. Clanging, clanging like, like the, the on noise. a bed, mm -hmm. like clanging. So Which sort of fits with, fits with that tied in. And being tied to the beds. Yeah, because I'm getting that. Yeah. I, I am seeing a picture of um, someone with long, really unruly hair and um, you know, like in the corner of the room, and I'm just trying to ascertain whether it's actually someone that is someone that we can work with, or whether it is just an imprint. So I don't know how much interaction we'll get, but certainly the fact that we're talking about them, they are sort of looking up and going, okay. If I was to, like I'm approaching and going over, it's more they're cowering even more. So like there's a lot of fear coming from them. You know, a lot of people would say, is, um, as psychics, it's our job to rescue them. Is it our job to, you know, help her cross over? I don't believe that's the case. Uh, I, I believe that that is part of the process, that they're still here. And yeah, we can help them, but it has to be with their consent. Yeah. I operate from a perspective of that we all have our own natural place in the light um, and that, that they can be no more stuck in their beliefs of who they are than, you know you are in yours or I am in mine exactly um, and I don't have a right to necessarily step in and think that you know I need to change that I can certainly talk and ask and say you know I'm here to help if you want help but we all have free will it's not something that we should intervene with in the sense of free will with the spirit world no more than what we would intervene in the free will of those still in the physical so in this instance, I'm going to extend an invitation to um, the energy that's in the corner over there for them to come and visit um, into my teaching circle um, so that they can work with us over time and um, we'll learn from them and they'll receive the healing that they need. Um, I, think, I feel like for now that's as far as, um, as far as working with them as I can go for now. The whole thing about going to the lie means that they're... Receiving light means you've received a new understanding or a new insight or, you know, you've raised your vibration. That happens mm -hmm. for us all the time whenever we achieve, like, some sort of form of self-healing. Exactly. A, a new level of consciousness. For me, that's what going to the light means. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So the crew from Whisper are in the next room, so let's just go and see what they're doing. Yeah, hi, guys. We're, uh, we're Whisper. We're City Paranormal Research. This is also Steve, he's, uh, he's our, uh, our psychic medium who works with us. Uh, and also Nikki. Show me what sort of equipment did you bring with you tonight? Andrew, we've got all sorts of equipment here with Whisper. Obviously, we've got our, our EMF meters, uh, we've got our, our audio um, digital voice recorders. Uh, obviously, the, the standard... Um, 
camcorders with night vision on it. We've got a, a new Ghost Meter Pro uh, that we'd actually like to try out tonight as well, which uh, apparently gets some really good uh, communicating with spirits. So how did you guys get into um, this field? WISPA actually is not a very uh, old organisation at all. We're quite new. Uh, however, we, we're not new to the paranormal. Uh, we've been researching the paranormal for a number of years individually. I experienced my first paranormal um, experience, if you like, when I was 16 years old. Uh, I was at my sister's house when I saw my first ghost, if you like, which really fueled my knowledge for the paranormal and, and that hunger for what's out there, what am I experiencing, am I going mad, am I not? Uh, and actually what it is. And that's how I entered uh, myself into the paranormal. We'd like to ask if there's any spirit people here that they could make themselves known in some way, please. Well, they asked, uh, yeah, they asked uh, whispering about patient. Got the scrubbing of hands. I feel that there's a doctor talking to someone else. And the doc there's one of them scrubbing their hands at the basin, but it's quite ferocious scrubbing. Yeah. Is that um, an imprint, a residual thing, or is there one, a consciousness there that can talk to you? I can give you a description, but I'm not getting words. I'm looking at a man who would be standing there to be at, at least your five foot nine to 10. Um, I have dark hair, but it's slightly peppered on the sides. Um, there's no facial hair on this gentleman. Um, his, his arms, though, are quite hairy, like they're not... But again, I'm not yes. hearing anything. Okay, do you want to just explain, Craig, what's going on with that? Yeah, in your sorry, I'm just using uh, a Ghost Meter Pro, which actually is getting some uh, communication as well. Now, when you were talking about hairiness or not being hairy on arms, we were getting responses with that. So, I'd just like to ask, can you confirm if you are a male? Once for yes, twice for no. That just went once. It went once. Uh, were you a staff member here? Were you a doctor? Once for yes, twice for no. He was a doctor in the Second World War. He was an army doctor in the Second World War and he was he was here in the 50s, yeah. Were you an army doctor? Once for yes, twice for no, please. Once for yes. Thank you very much for answering. Were you in the Australian Army? Once for yes, twice for no. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us this week too. And remember to live your spirit.